Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship at Second Baptist Church. We are delighted to be here on this beautiful Sunday with all of you. Thank you so much for spending the morning with us. I know we have some folks who are checking us out and visiting this morning, and we want to say welcome. We're so glad you're here. Uh, there's a way for you to let us know that you came just by scanning the back of your worship guide, and we would just like to say hello to you, and uh, thank you for coming today. And those of you joining us online, we welcome you as well this morning. This morning, today, I am so happy to welcome Ben Hinky. He's right here. He's a new worship director for a while. Ben comes to us highly recommended, and we are honored that you are here with us, and we all look forward to getting to know Ben as the weeks move on. Also, I want to say happy spring break, to, especially to you kiddos out there. Happy spring break. I bet you woke up with a sigh of relief this morning that you don't have to go to school this week, and we're glad you're here, which means, yeah, see, I see some joy back there. Thanks. This week, we won't be seeing you on Wednesday night because it is spring break, but we'd love to invite you back on Thursday for our Lenten lunch. Um, Reverend Joanna, Joanna Gregory from First Baptist Petersburg will be here. She, I believe, is the youth minister at First Baptist Petersburg, also the associate pastor, and she's great friends with Josh McDonald, our youth minister. And so if you have time this Thursday because it's spring break, come have some soup and sandwiches, and we'd love for you to be here with us. Y'all, thanks so much for the Easter eggs. They are filling up in that bin, and our kids are getting excited about our Easter extravaganza, which happens on April the 1st. All of y'all are welcome to join us for the bounce house and the games and the eggs and the fun. So come on out, keep bringing your eggs, and we're going to have a great day um, April the 1st morning. Today is Communion Sunday. You picked a great day to come to worship. We will be bringing communion to you in your seats, and we ask that you just hold on to it, and Pastor Jake will lead you, and we will all participate in communion together this morning. Now let's just, let's prepare ourselves for this beautiful worship service today. Take a deep breath. And may the Lord be with you. Now I invite you as you're able to stand for the call to worship with me. Welcome, travelers, on the way to the cross. We are learning to follow Jesus. The way is long, and we are thirsty. We seek the living waters of Jesus. We feel the weight of scarcity, warring with hopeful whispers of abundance. We need the living waters of Jesus. We wonder if God will provide us with what we need here and now. Quench the thirst and meet the needs of our neighbors. Travelers on the way, come, let us worship God. We come to worship God as we learn to live inside out. Amen. Thank you, Ben. That was excellent. A quick public service announcement. There may, you might have noticed some smoke coming out of the youth room. We were not 
burning anything. Uh, we were just doing pancakes and bacon and learning to live grateful. And that was a powerful message. That was a very powerful message. Thank you, Jake. For, uh, I mean, he does everything around here. He's getting out the blowers and hooking up sound systems, but y'all probably want to pray. So let's just take a minute here and let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that you promise us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. Lord, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. And we ask all this in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, all the glory of God the Father. Amen. gets prettier and prettier each week y'all thank you boys and girls i'd like to invite you down to the front for children's time will y'all come see me come on down i'm glad y'all are here i need lots of chipper people today so bring your happy hearts with you eva you want to come sit right over here by ren perfect hi friends you guys want to sit up here so everybody can see your sweet faces right here yeah well, I just want to say welcome. TJ, you want to get right out up there? Here we go, right next to one. Here we go, right here. What? Let's go. There. Did I hurt your fingers? I'm sorry if I did. I'm so sorry. There we go. Well, welcome. I'm glad you guys are here. I want to say happy March Madness, right? Oh, no, you're ready, aren't you? Hang on one second. I'll give it to you. Hold on. So how many of you are really awesome star basketball players? <laughs> Look at that. We got, woohoo! I would like to see that. Once we get some basketball goals back up, I'm going to put you to the test. All right. Look, we got Ren. Okay. Well, guess what? I am not. You are a star basketball player? I am not a star basketball player, but I am really good at one thing. 
Do you want to know what it is? I'm really good at I'm really good at laughing. Are you guys good at laughing? So, no, okay, guess what? We're going to find out. So I need you all to stand up so they can see your, and you, hey, little friends, let's have you stand right here on the stage so they can see your sweet faces. Y'all stand on up. If you need to stand up here because you're a little, you know, height challenge, we can go right on up here. Here we go. Okay, so they can see, you want to stand up there, Ren? Okay, all right, so if you want to jump up, TJ, you want to get on the stage so they can see you? Okay, so here's what I need you guys to do. Juan, you want to stand next to your brother so he can stand? All right, so have you ever sat in your room and looked in the mirror and practiced your best laugh. You've never done it? You've never looked in the mirror and been like, ha, 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 ha. You've never done that? Okay, all right, who thinks they have the best laugh in the group? I told you I need a participation today, Tessa. Eva, can you give us your best laugh? Let's hear it, I'm gonna give the microphone. Do it real good. Can you give us a good laugh? Ready? <laughs> oh, that. Listen to what just happened when you did that. Did you hear that? Okay, anyone else got a really good one? No one else is gonna give it. Caitlin, okay, ready? You ready to give us your best laugh? <laughs> oh, oh, that's a sweet one. Clark, you wanna give us a good laugh? No? Let's see, Tessa, are you ready? Tessa's ready, here we go, ready? Ready, I'll do it. Oh, that was a good, that was, that was a little shy laugh, okay. Okay, we're gonna do it all at the same time. On the count of three, we're gonna all do our very best belly laugh. Are you ready? One, two, three. <laughs> now look what's happening when you do that. These laughs out here, those are real. Those aren't even fake looking in the mirror laughs. Those are real laughs. And one of the things we're talking about today is praising God. You can sit back down with what we're great at, right? Praising God. Sometimes we have really beautiful singers. We have really wonderful musicians. Sometimes we have really awesome basketball players. And sometimes we have people who worship God with their bodies. And when we laugh, and when we celebrate, and when we're joyful, our God is joyful too. And when these people laugh, it brings, it brings glory to God. And that's one of the ways that you can praise God is by being happy, and by being laughing, and by making people laugh, and bringing smiles to other people's faces, right? So that's one way that you can praise God this week while you're on spring break. Just stand in the mirror, and I promise you, after you do your favorite fake belly laugh, it'll just start you rolling, and you'll just be laughing, and you'll have tears coming down your face. And because you've been such great, great, participants today. Please take a basketball because it is March Madness. Please take one with you. And remember that not all of us are the best, but we can all bring glory to God by making people laugh and bringing joy. Oh, no, we'll get that for you, sweet babe. Hang on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Clark. All right, as we pass out the rest of the basketballs, let's pray really quickly. Will you pray with me? <laughs> we got a game going. God, we love you. We thank you for all the joy and the laughter in this place today and all these sweet lovies. Amen. Yes. Are you ready? Let's go to preschool praise with Miss Donna. You ready, baby? Come on. Ready? The Hebrew reading for this morning is from Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted for water, and the people complained against Moses, saying, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go on. I will stand there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. 
Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is one of our sacred stories. Thanks be to God. The psalm reading for today is from Psalm 95. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth the dry land which his hands have formed. 
O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day at Massah in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For 40 years I loathed that, loathed that generation and said, they are a people whose hearts go astray and they do not regard my ways. Therefore, in my anger, I swore, they shall not enter my rest. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the words of our lips and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. We are in the Psalms, this Lenten season, this journey together. And, and I don't know how it was for you. And I thank you, Carol, for sharing your just beautiful voice with our congregation. I don't know how it was for you to sort of hear the second half of that Psalm, Psalm 95, particularly the end where it said, the people shall not enter my rest. And then we said, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you read this psalm, the first part, uh, very, very similar to Pastor Cheryl's uh, children's uh, time, it was this incredible word of praise into the goodness and to the glory of God. And then about verse six or seven, it takes this turn. And it is tough. Which sort of has reminded me of life a little bit this week. That in some regards, sometimes... The second half of things can be quite difficult, and quite challenging. It would, be, it would be so nice, wouldn't it, to get up to a big lead and at halftime to have a glass of lemonade or some other sort of beverage that also involves lemonade and then just put your feet up and enjoy the second half. But I'm thinking you, you may know as well as I do. You may know better than I do. And sometimes the second half isn't easy at all. It's more challenging than the first. And that's what I encountered a bit with this psalm as it sort of, as it recalled this story from Exodus that we've received. And the people have been delivered delivered from bondage and, and, and slavery in Egypt, and here they are in, in the desert. Can you imagine a place, a space, um, an ecology in which there's lots of dirt and dust and heat? And here the people are, and they're crying out, they're crying out for water. Very early in our dating life, I picked up Allison and 
suggested to her, I'm starving. What do you say we go get something to eat? Now, isn't that a great move? She looked at me and she said, you're not starving now and you've never experienced real hunger a day in your life. I looked at her and I said, marry me. In the wilderness, in the desert, the people ex experience thirst, true hunger, as one does in the desert. And it can be reductionistic and easy to jump to a critique of the people for calling out for water. But West Texas, you well know what it's like to be in the dirt, in the heat, and to experience thirst. Now, Ron Snyder's work is 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 challenging to us, that we live in a world in which there are uh, uh, an increasingly amount, a tremendously uh, unproportional amount of rich Christians in a world in which there is real and true hunger. And so we do receive this as a challenge and as a reminder of the responsibility that we have to share in the name of Christ. Yeah. But, but I, I'd like to just for a moment uh, just pause and acknowledge what you feel in the desert, whatever that may be, you're allowed to feel. You're allowed to experience that, that doubt, that concern, that worry, that thing that keeps you up at night. And you've tried counting sheep and it didn't work and you tried counting blessings, and it didn't work. And that which causes true and legitimate worry within you, you're allowed to feel that. Yeah. You're a human being. And part of being a human being is having this emotional life. These spaces in the text of Meribah and Massa in Hebrew it literally mean to test to argue with, and you're allowed. You're allowed to question. You're allowed to test. You're allowed to argue with. I think one of the great testimonies of the Psalms is that God desires our honesty about these things. And maybe during this Lenten season, you'll find space and time to be honest about that which you doubt, that which concerns you, that which keeps you up night, at night with worry, that which you are literally wondering if God, if God is in this or not. <laughs> it was one of those Lubbock summer mornings. It was about 18 months ago, and Lainey was one, and Eva was Three. In fact, Allison, would you help me? What a wonderful Vanna White I have. Uh, sorry. Didn't plan to do that. Meant to bring those with me. Um, it was a, 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 a Lubbock sun, summer morning. And you know when the morning feels nice, but you know it's going to burn later that day? And, and uh, the girls and I did what we try to do sometimes. Uh, Lainey and, and Eva and I would try to get out of the house a little bit, out, let Allison do her thing, and we go to one of these local parks. And there's a park over here on Saturdays we like to go to. It's about, um, uh, anyways, uh, nearby. And we in our home, it's very important to recognize uh, personal property. The blue water bottle is mine. The purple water bottle is Eva's. And the uh, uh, yellowish green one is Laney's. Now we acknowledge purple uh, personal property, but no one adheres to said uh, rules in our home. But I had packed these water bottles in, in the double stroller and we headed out uh, to the park, knowing that it would be warm, each minute it getting warmer and warmer. And we had been at the park for not long and I had noticed that my water bottle was empty, and Eva's water bottle had also been emptied, knowing that this likely was an indicator that at some point we would need to head home, but Lainey's water bottle was still full. And the girls were playing and having fun eating sand and throwing rocks at people. 
And as they were having a good time, I was distracted either by my phone or a squirrel. <laughs> and then I heard my children screaming at one another. And as I turned my attention back to the park and to my children as to where it should have been all along, And there was Lainey with her shirt drenched with water and Eva holding her now Lainey's cup, which is now empty. And they're each yelling, requesting, we would say, my help. And I began to come towards them with a very positive attitude, asking how I might be of service. And they're each saying, help, help. And at first I was quite frustrated. The last of our water had now been poured out onto our youngest. And as I got closer, I discovered that the straw in here, it can come apart. And it had come apart. And the reason why Lanny wasn't drinking her water is because the straw had come apart and it wasn't working. And so in reality, despite my best interpretations initially, in reality, Eva, our oldest, had taken off the lid and handed her younger sister a cup of water. And I had every right to question, to be concerned, to worry. But as often is the case, what I think might be going on in reality, there's something often much deeper, much better, and far more beautiful happening than I could ever imagine. The people are in the desert, and they have cried out for water. And it was not Moses who gave them such. The people are in the desert and cry out for water, and it was not Moses who gave them water. The Lord provides. The Lord is faithful. In the second half of our lives, the Lord provides and the Lord is faithful. When we are hungry, whether we are experiencing true hunger or not, the Lord provides. The Lord is faithful faithful. And when we are truly in that desert of testing, of worry, of doubt, the Lord provides and the Lord is faithful. Receive this, our prayer, O God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue to worship.
Before we pray, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation and gratefulness to our pastors and staff and the ministry they do among us. Thank you. <clears throat> You'll join me in prayer. God, most gracious and forgiving, at this hour we give thanks for this life and all you have created. We are especially thankful for this safe harbor we call Second Baptist. In a world filled with strife and conflict, we are grateful for this space to pause and breathe deeply. For we know that breath is truly gift. Now let us each take our unique gifts created by you and use them to love and bless others. Help us to share our bounty and speak a word of kindness one to another. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you and bless you. Let's stand and share in that peace together.
As we prepare to share in the table of Christ together, let's celebrate these words that have grounded the church in faith for centuries together. I believe in God, eternal, almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the redeemer of all, the only begotten one, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, lived and loved amongst us, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended into hell, and on the third day rose from the dead. Jesus, our Savior, ascended into heaven, sits at the right hand of the loving God, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You can be seated. First time I was invited to serve on an ordination council as a representative of a clergy, and it was a joy and a privilege and an honor for new buyers was considering receiving ordination to Christian uh, ministry. Certainly as part of that process, we considered uh, his uh, theological ideals and his uh, theories on church and a pastoral identity and yada, yada, yada. And you can't yada, yada, yada ordination. But certainly as part of that process, we did uh, talk about his life, what it was like to be divorced and to be co-parenting with his ex, a wonderful uh, young man. And it was a joy, even sort of healing for him and for our congregation at the end of that process to celebrate his organ ordination, that the Holy Spirit really had called him to serve official, officially as, as a pastor, as clergy in the church. And I'll never forget that as part of that celebration of ordination, our ordination team served the congregation communion. And we came down from the table, and he stood there, and I stood there, and the person sitting right here where Terrell is, where real Baptists sit on the front row, was his ex-wife. And the first person to celebrate communion, the table of Christ, was a person that he had experienced true reconciliation with. So we invite you to come to the table to meet with Christ who reconciles all things. Our deacons will invite you to receive these elements and if you would, hold on to them for just a moment that we might all celebrate in unison.
the body of Christ broken and the body of Christ resurrected in our bodies and from the grave, receive, remember, and relive the hope of the world. The cup of Christ, yes, representing the blood that was shed and the promises of new life. Receive, remember, and relive the hope of the world. Amen. What a joy it is to celebrate the table with you. Just a privilege to walk in faith together. I invite you to stand as we continue to worship. Church, thank you so much uh, for joining us for worship. Your voice, your face, your presence is the primary way I know that Christ has risen and you have been Christ to me today. If you would join me also just one more time in welcoming and thanking Ben for being here with us. He's a, he's a Leeds United fan, so we'll pray for him. And this last comment, it won't be popular, but I think we should paint the church green today. I didn't say green and gold, and I surely didn't say maroon. I said green in remembrance of uh, St. Patrick, who said, May the peace of Christ be before you to lead you, beside you to guard you, beneath you to support you, and within you to keep you. May the peace of Christ always be above you to bless you. Go in that peace. Amen.